we're talking about the scriptures that have been highlighted in red in so many versions of the scripture where it's just Jesus' words. Now, Tony, Jesus refers to uh, the end of days and he talks about the kingdom of heaven being like uh, uh, a wedding party, uh, a big event where uh, everybody's having fun. Uh, what about this? Well, Jesus was Jewish. Which is the next best thing to being Italian. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> People often ask me, why didn't Jesus come as an Italian? And the answer is, he came to humble himself. <laughs> so he couldn't be Italian. But at any rate, uh, they asked him uh, what his kingdom was like. He says, like a wedding feast. Italians, Jews, Greeks, Arab peoples, all of those who live in the Mediterranean area. We know how to throw weddings. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to oh, an Italian sure. wedding? Absolutely. I've been to Jewish weddings and yeah. Arab weddings. Have you ever been to an Italian yes. funeral? Uh, no, not an Italian well, funeral. Well, no, no problem. The only difference between an Italian wedding and an Italian funeral is that there's one less person at the Italian <laughs> funeral. You know, we are into celebration. Right. And Jesus, you know, is into that. My kingdom is like an unto a wedding feast. You know, the uh, Hebraic father mortgaged the farm yeah. and took the money out of the bank and there was drinking and eating and celebration. That's what my kingdom is like. We, we run a number of inner city programs uh, through our organization, the Evangelical Association for the Promotion of Education. That's a mouthful, yeah. EAPE, uh, which has its own website, eape.org. And uh, running a soup kitchen over in Camden, New Jersey, I went there one day and here's these college kids, you know, dip, dipping out soup to these people, you know, with their bulk. Kids said, see that, Coney? That's the kingdom of God. I said, I hope not. The kingdom of God isn't a soup kitchen. It is an incredible banquet feast. Mm. I mean, they're singing and uh, dancing. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy, where it deals with tithing, mm. the church has got tithing all wrong. I hate to say this. They mm. got it all wrong. Yes, they love to say you're to bring one-tenth of all your wealth mm. to Jerusalem for the Passover. Yeah, but they don't go on. The preacher never goes on and say, what's the money to be used for? You know, bring one-tenth of your wealth to Jerusalem. And what are you supposed to do with it? Is this going to finance the clergy? Is it going to put a new education extension onto the temple? Uh, is it for farm missions? No. You're to bring one-tenth, and it is to be used for this purpose. You shall bring it to Jerusalem. Check it out in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus. And it is to be spent this way. There shall be dancing. That upsets Baptists all over the country. <laughs> there shall be singing. There shall be feasting, there shall be drink, and if Baptists aren't offended by dancing, the next line is really upsetting. <laughs> it shall be strong drink. Now, imagine all the Jews coming together once a year, bringing one-tenth of the gross national product of the country, and blowing it on one gigantic celebration. And they say, and make sure to invite the widow and the orphan and the Levite, those who have no income, make sure they all come and experience this incredible celebration. And you say, what's that about? The Lord says, I want you to spend one-tenth of your income on partying because it will give you a foretaste of what the kingdom of God will be like when it comes mm -hmm. in its fullness. When the kingdom comes, it will be one gigantic celebration. You say, whoa, that's some picture of dancing and singing and drinking. No wonder kids said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I mean, if church was one gigantic celebration, kids would not be bored with it. But that's what it was. It was celebration. And Jesus is all through celebration. Mm. Zacchaeus. Mm. Remember this guy yeah. who rips off everybody in town? Yeah. You, you know the rest of the story, don't you? Yeah, he invites Jesus home, says, I'll give four times what I... And, off and Jesus says, what? I'm going to come to your house and... We'll, we'll have a party. We'll have a party. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you, whoa, what's going on here? The sign of repentance is celebration. Uh, it says in the Bible, when a sinner repents, the angels in heaven are going to throw a, a party. I, I love the story of the prodigal son, who all the way home is rehearsing mm. his speech. All right, sin yeah, against yeah, heaven, yeah. against thee, I'm no longer... Father sees him, runs out, throws his arms around him. The kid starts a speech, Father, I have sinned against it. Father's not listening. Harry, this kid's in rags. Get a robe on him. Bill, get a ring on his finger. And the kid says, I am no longer worthy. <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> Harry, out behind the barn, there's a fat calf. Kill that sucker. We're going to have a party. Yeah. And then there's the older brother. Yeah. 
there's always an older brother. <laughs> they usually elect him to be chairman of the Board of Deacons. Right. <laughs> I've been in this place for 40 years. <laughs> faithful. That's me, faithful. In season and out season. Never threw a party for me. I feel like saying no wonder. No wonder. <laughs> But the idea of bringing celebration into the lives of others, that's what Jesus wants. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be walking around as beaten down, dull people, beating our chest. As a matter of fact, he condemns that. He says, when you fast, don't be like the Pharisees who dress up in sackcloth and put ashes on their face and go around saying, I'm sacrificing, I'm sacrificing, I'm sacrificing. Make sure nobody knows what you're doing. Go with a smile on your face. Go with celebration into the world. A red letter Christian is somebody who knows how to have fun. He has to have fun yeah. because having fun is part of your testimony to the world. Yeah. Uh, no wonder the world isn't attracted to Christianity if all we are are a bunch of people who are so serious and deadpanned all the faith time and, and, and soup kitchens. Is that what we're about? No, we're about partying. Yeah. You know, I'm th as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about a, a village of widows and orphans that we started working with with uh, my, my missions organization about uh, four or five years ago, and they were absolutely destitute. They were in rough shape in Malawi. And we went in and in a simple way started working with them, empowering them, getting the, uh, the women trained in income generation. Uh, we put in a borehole or two to give them fresh water. We started uh, training the kids, getting them educated, and uh, teaching them how to grow food. And anyway, about a year and a half later, my wife and I came back uh, for a visit, and as we were rounding uh, some trees just about to come into the village center, I, I heard all this singing and dancing, and, and there's all of these widows, there's about 250 of them, all in their best, singing and dancing, anticipating our arrival. They swarmed around us. I felt like uh, Obama during his <laughs> campaign. I mean, <laughs> and they took us into their center that we'd helped them build and, and showed us all of the things that they had made. And then they started doing some dancing and some singing. And then they showed us all the money they'd made that week and how it was all going into the bank. And everybody was now fed and clothed. And they said, it's all because of Jesus. Yeah. And I thought, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we, 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 we show the deprivation, we show the sorrow, we show the poverty because we must, because a message has to be communicated. But ultimately, this, the, 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 the story is one of joy. Yeah. I, I was in London doing a speaking tour. And the last church I spoke in was this Anglican church just on the edge of the most intensely populated section of London. And I was speaking there at an evening service. I was surprised they had an evening service in an Anglican church. Yeah place was packed with young people. They had had four earlier services, each of them packed, and the church looked like it held about 500 people. I'd never heard of this church before. I just took it because they said, you got the evening free, could you come and speak for us? So I went, and I said, I said, I had a problem getting here. There was no place to park. This is London, there's no place to park. How, how, how do people park their cars when they come to church? I always said, uh, almost everybody in this church walks to church. Every, almost all of our members are in walking distance. I said, how does a church get this many people in walking distance to come? Well, he said, every Saturday night, we rope off a street in the neighborhood. We bring in a band. We bring in a couple of barrels of beer. About 20, about 200 of our young people go there. And we have a block party. And we drink beer and they play the music and the people come out on the streets and they dance with our young people. And, and at the end of the evening, our young people say, look, uh, uh, you know we're from St. Paul's. Um, I'd like you to come to church with me tomorrow and I'll come by and pick you up if you're willing to come. And he said, it's amazing. More people than you would think say, okay, if you'll come by and pick me up. And that's the way we've grown like this. We, what an interesting thing to bring people into the church. By a party. By a party. By a party. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I expect the services themselves must be, must be pretty uh, joyful too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's, it, it's, it's Anglican liturgy. Why do, why do we... But uh, it's uh, really done beautifully and joyfully. Well, and, and, and you can't beat Anglican liturgy. It's yeah. gotta be the best. Yeah. Um, 
why, why, why the dour, sober, legalistic demeanor historically? Why is it that Christians have uh, thought that to be spiritual means to be unhappy and dull and, and, uh, and, and, and negative? We must concentrate on two things, and we concentrate on just one of them. We concentrate on the cross. Right. The truth is, if that's all you're concentrated on, you're going to be sad. Right. The Orthodox churches, Russian Orthodox, Bulgarian Orthodox, right. Greek Orthodox, they concentrate on the resurrection. Right. That's their big day. And do you know what they do in Moscow? Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the uh, Orthodox priests save up all their jokes at midnight when Easter Day begins mm -hmm. on their calendar. Mm -hmm. They all get together, the, all the clergy get together. And from 12 o'clock until 4 o'clock in the morning, they just tell jokes. No. Laughing and laughing and laughing because the resurrection, joy has come back into the world. The darkness is dispelled. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. <laughs> the triumphal, glorious joyfulness of he who is dead is now alive. Uh, you know, we need to somehow capture that. Uh, yeah, in the, in the cross of Christ I glory. Yeah, but the old rookie cross, we need that. But we need the resurrection. And we need to recognize that we are people of the resurrection. If Christ is dead, if Christ be not resurrected from the grave, here's what it says. We are men most miserable. I don't think that we communicate quite enough of Jesus having been resurrected. The whole time I was growing up in the Baptist church, all they did was talk about what God accomplished in Christ on the cross. Oh, it's wonderful. Save me from my sin. He took the punishment from my sin. But that's all I heard. Do you preach the cross? Do you preach the cross? We had a sign out in front of our church that said, we preach Christ crucified. Yeah, why don't you put the rest of the verse in? Yeah. Risen yeah. and coming again. again. The truth is, that he's the resurrected Lord of history. And I think there has to be a recovery of the red, I mean, those red letters. In the face of death and despair, he says what? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whoa, 